Welcome back to part two of checking assumptions for repeated measures de novo in our studio. In part one, we looked at the normality of 10 subgroups. And for this part, we're going to look at now determining the homogeneity variance across the 10 subgroups. And then because of the within subjects factor of time, we're going to then look at uh, sphericity as well. Okay, so um, let's go to our R script. So we before, I suppose, in part one, we just looked at, I suppose, outputting the kind of the mean, I suppose, kind of descriptive statistics to give us an idea to whether or not our data is normally distributed and the result then from the Shapiro width test. Okay, so the next thing then we want to look at then will be the homogeneity of variance. To look at homogeneity of variance, so it's not Levine's test. So if we were to do Levine's test, and this is something I just would have mentioned in part one as well, Levine's test would give us uh, results for each of our uh, at each of our time points with respect to male and female. So we'd have five results from Levine's test. That's not what we're really interested in here, even though that's that's an okay result. What we're more interested in here is the homogeneity variance across all the groups, kind of all together. So what we're going to be applying in that case will be BOX's test or BOX's M test, sometimes it may be called, okay? To apply that uh, function, we're going to need the BioTools package and to overall to use the function, we need the data to be actually in a wide format, okay? So we need to use tidy or to help us to change our data from uh, long to wide, okay? So we're just gonna first just focus on doing just that bit first, so that'll be here. Okay, and I'm just gonna view the wide there so we can everyone can just see what it is. So we have the data in long, so there it is here. And so now we have it in wide format, okay? So what we are interested in now is overall, is there a difference in the variances across the five time points with respect to gender? To use the bio tools uh, package or more so to use boxes M function, you've this kind of state where your, I suppose, your time points are or your within subjects factor or what you're interested in, your measurements ultimately. So we have the state that our measurements are going from column three, four, five, six, up to column seven. And then we state, have to state what our actual factor is. Okay, what's the between subjects factor? We obviously need that. And so the between subjects factor then is going to be gender. Okay, so that's what we're saying here. So we're saying that we're looking at the wide data frame we're looking at the column three up to column seven. There, there are within the subject's effects. And then we're looking at with respect to gender. Okay, so we do that here. We get the output. Now, again, for the purposes of the video, what we're mainly interested in is just kind of how to present the results from this. So uh, I'm not going to dwell too long on the actual, I suppose, what's happening behind the scenes when you're using boxes test or boxes M test. What we're mainly interested in here is the p-value. So I'm just going to look at trying to isolate the p-value. So I've called all the output from uh, boxes test uh, there. Okay, so I've, that's what I've called it. And now I'm just going to look at subparts of it. So if I look at bare um, dollar sign p-value, so if I type it in just down here so you can just see fair and then the attribute of it. So these are the various attributes to it. So you can see that here is the p-value and you can actually see it here of being 0.4438, okay? So then it's a case of, well, if the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, that means equal variances are assumed, and if it's not, that means it's not, okay? So I'm just gonna run that off, and that's just a nice result that we have down here. So the result from our test here at the moment is that yes, variances are equal, and then there is the p-value to back it up, okay? And again, just in part one, I would have just shown what the end goal is here. Our end goal is to generate a table like this. So where we actually are here now is row eight, where we actually have the yes and 0.4438. The next thing then would be the uh, test of sericity. So if we come here to our Z, Sorry, so we, I was thinking, that when I said RZ, I was thinking of the EZ. So we're looking to do the EZ ANOVA function. So we need the EZ uh, package for that. So we state our data frame. We state what our dependent variable is, which is triglyceride. We state what the, the participant ID is. Then what is our between subjects effect, which is gender? What is the within subjects factor? Uh, within subjects effect, which is time. And then we say what type of uh, ANOVA are we trying to do? So we're going to look at the, the type three. And I just put in a comment here that it doesn't, it won't work if there's missing data. And that's actually the same up here I put in the comment, but I forgot to say it, that boxes test doesn't work if you have missing data, okay? But, Ultimately, when you think of where you're going with an EZ ANOVA, it's all about having paired up that anyway, so you can't actually have any missing. So if you have missing, you need to impute it, and look, that's beyond the purposes of this video. Okay, so this is where we're just gonna run off the EZ ANOVA. What this will give us then would be the, I suppose, the results for, um, 
or at your Lenovo, uh, so we'll have, since there's two factors, there's ultimately uh, going to be three high policies happening behind the scenes. That's not what we're interested in, okay? We're not interested in that. What we're mainly interested in for the purposes of this video is the test of seriously results and how we actually can just get that is from the running off the EZ Lenovo. So when we run that off, I'm calling the output res1 for result1 for some reason. There's a lot of different outputs we have here. So the, the warning it just gives us up here is just telling us that our groups are unbalanced. So we know that we have seven males, uh, sorry, seven females and nine males. And this is just telling you to be careful to what type of ANOVA, what type of you is specified. So we've typed, uh, specified type three, which is quite traditional in this case. That's fine. So it still gives you as a default, gives you a warning up here. That's what it's just saying there, okay? So that's fine for us. It's giving us the p-values then for uh, there are five high policies, which is not what we're focusing on for this. When I say the five high policies, that's the five high policies in relation to the ANOVA. If equal variances are assumed, you read the results from the top. If equal variances are not assumed, you read the results down low. That's not, again, that's not what we're interested in. What we're mainly interested in is the results for sphericity. So the results for sphericity is here, and we can see that here is our p-value, 0.4671. Okay, so that's what we actually have. Okay, so we want to basically just, I suppose, extract this spiracy result. Okay, so this is telling us that spiracy is actually assumed. So for this then, so what you could look at here, I'm just going to start typing it here. So res1 is the name of all the output. Dollar sign, I can get the attribute. So here you have the test of sphericity. And if I do dollar sign again, you can get more of an attribute. Actually, sorry, not dollar sign again. So if I do, if you do this part first here, you can just see, look, what you actually end up with is ultimately it's actually a matrix which, with two rows and three columns. And what we're interested in here is the p-value here at the end. So the p-value in both cases is going to be the same. So for that previous line, sorry, here, for this previous line, I'm going to then look at the particular part we're interested in, which would be in a matrix. So this is the indexing. So one first row, third column. If we do something like that, that'll isolate the p-value exactly first, okay? And then up here in the script, it's a case of, well, if the p-value, and I'm calling that p-value, I'm calling it SPH, abbreviation for sphere. If the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, then sphericity is assumed. If p-value is less than or equal to 0 0.05, it's not assumed. And this is where we are here. It didn't like that for some reason because I actually never ran off the line before it with all my talks. So I didn't actually run off uh, SPH. So there and then here, and there's the result. Okay. So now that's where we actually have, I suppose, at the moment where we are now is we have our 10 p values from the test of normality. We have our 1 p value for boxes test, and now we have another p value for the test of sphericity. And what we're just looking at doing is putting all that information together for potentially an appendix, if that's what we want. There are loads of ways of doing this, okay? There's absolutely loads of ways. And I'm just giving you one, I suppose. I, I'm actually going to give two different options here. One is kind of the, the simplest way of doing it. And there'll always be a small bit of manipulation in or uh, Sorry, there's always going to be a small bit of manipulation in Excel or Word when it comes to formatting your table. What I just don't like is I don't like typing up the numbers myself. If I can avoid doing that, I'm, I'm, I'm quite happy, okay? So here, for option one is, all I'm doing here is a row bind where I'm looking at T norm, which was the, all the results that we had from the test of normality, which we saw in the part one video. Then their equal variance is assumed result, and then the sphericity result. And then I'm writing, so that's what I'm calling all that. Option one, actually, I'll do it here like this. Now, this is not necessarily perfect, okay? So this is where, it's attaching the results of homogeneity of variance and sphericity to the normality results that we have. So you can see here there's a small bit of replication because it's a row bind, so it's repeating the sphericity and the homogeneity of variance for all rows. But that's a really simple workaround um, in Excel if we want to do this. And then it's going to be a case of writing it to an Excel, uh, writing it to an Excel file. So I'm putting it into this option one. I'm calling it option one, which is in this folder that I'm saying is repeated measures and over. So let's do that here. So I come here then to my uh, folder for the, 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 I suppose, the information that I have for the purposes of this video. So I can see here, look, here's option one. Now, again, this is what I, I showed earlier on. So this is the sample output that we're working towards. But here's option one. And for option one here, you can see that, well, this is, I mean, there's always going to be a bit of formatting. But you can see here, we have all the p-values here that for the normality. We have all our mean medians. We have the skewness. And then we have the results for the homogeneity of variance and sphericity. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly just manipulate this, just kind of, I suppose, show you how I'd format it, okay? Uh, but, like, what I like with this, there's all, again, there's always going to be a small bit of formatting your tables. It's never going to be perfect. But what I like is, uh, I like that all the numbers are there. 
okay so i'm not typing any numbers so there's definitely that transparency and i have the script then for that okay so this is one option this is the simplest version and uh, I'll, I'll run off a second option but i won't format that then as the end okay so let's just see here i'm just going to get rid of this bit at the very top so look what i'm trying to do here is i'm just going to try to make it look like this that's basically where i am okay that's what i'm working towards here okay so this won't take that long so i don't necessarily need all the females mentioned so many times don't okay i don't need the males mentioned so many times so i'm going to do that that's fine uh you can see here it doesn't it's not reading these as numbers so you can see that that's the, a bit of that symbol up here in the top left hand side of the cell is telling me that so if i highlight them you can get this warning sign over here convert to number so there it is it's converted to number when it does that sometimes it upsets the decimal places so all our raw data is our whole numbers so when you calculate a measure of centrality then generally your measure of centrality is one extra decimal place to whatever your raw data is so i'm just going to put them down as one decimal place as being consistent okay so i always think like even you can see here 152.0 i think it's important to say 0, 0.0 for a consistency of all your num the formatting your numbers skewness is the next one skewness I would generally, so for the skewness, you're looking at a calculation that involves the mean, median, and the standard deviation. So I would at the very least have it one extra decimal place to the measure of centralities, if not two extra decimal places. And that's, and that's up to you to maybe decide that. So just to, I'm going to format it here to oh, everything being one decimal place. Uh, I'm just going to widen this guy here a small bit. That's perfect. Uh, then you can just see here for equal variance is assumed. This is repetition. Like if you look at this, you can see up here and the, the view up here that that's it's the same all the way across okay so you don't need all of it so i'm just going to highlight all these guys do merge and center perfect then i'll do the same here merge and center perfect um what else do i want to do then you might decide yourself that the sample sizes you don't necessarily need to save them as seven and nine here that, that's up to you and I'm, I'm going to leave them there anyway for this and i think all, all that's left here is just need to widen these guys here so we can see the yes and the p values like that and then if i just zoom in on a fraction that's where we are and then the last thing we do is just to put in the borders like so boom boom and there it is okay so and again they're like there's loads of ways of doing this and please by all means throw something into the comments if you want or i suppose the only thing i'm just spotting here is that i had these guys centered just think like that look you can always i find when you start doing this is you start getting very finicky with how you'd like to present it but look this is this is basically where we are and this is where you had this is the sample one i had at the start okay now the only thing then if you wanted to the only thing that i would say here is when i suppose it was written the the data was written to excel do you remember the way the homogeneity variance and the sphericity results was repeated across all the the column so it was repeated it was stated once and then repeated nine more times you could avoid that if you wanted to and that's just what the second option here is it's just where the equal variance is assumed it's obviously a result is what we have and then i'm just repeating the result with a blank nine times and it's the same with seriously assumed i'm repeating the result with a blank nine times and then doing a row bind after that so i'm just going to show you this and uh, not a requirement okay but it's just okay so it just can be just another way of doing it so you can see here it is and the difference here is the equal variance is assumed is just stated once and so is the sphericity so you could just i'm not going to edit this but you just format it there merge and center and there it is okay so look and being both options are fine i suppose the second option is a small bit tighter a fraction more tighter but it just means there's an additional line of code with it and that's all okay so look that's basically where we are with this um i think yeah i don't think there's anything else so the what the main thing here was I wanted to focus on the i suppose the script that is needed to check the assumptions for repeated measures ANOVA. now the repeated measures ANOVA that we're focusing on for this video is where there's a between and within subjects effect and then how to potentially present the results in a table and more so how to have scripts that will actually do that for you um hopefully you find this of interest um there's i have a few ideas of other videos to be, to be doing over the uh, coming weeks and months uh, but by all means uh, if there's um any videos that you might like to see or any uh, i suppose things that you might be stuck on in our studio uh by all means you can contact me on one of these uh, uh i suppose handles here or put something down into the comments or subscribe and you'll get no notification when the next video uploads are happening and everything like that um overall i hope you hope you're happy with these i hope they're of use to you in your own work and um for now all the best.